exploring scoliosis pain. When discussing scoliosis, we have to understand that scoliosis is a structural spinal condition, and scoliosis always involves the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature. A scoliosis curve also rotating it, making it a three-dimensional condition, and when scoliosis also occurs, it tends to affect the sagittal or the side view of the spine as well. Scoliosis curves can have to be minimally to be diagnosed as scoliosis at least 10 degrees measured by a Cobb angle analysis. A Cobb angle is a measurement taken during an x-ray that tells you how far of alignment or how severe the scoliosis is in terms of its classification. Mild scoliosis, moderate, severe, or very severe. The higher the Cobb angle, the more severe the condition is and the more likely it is to lead to more significant effects like pain are gonna be more, more noticeable in the more severe types of cases. We also know scoliosis is a progressive problem, meaning that it is almost guaranteed that it's gonna worsen over time at some point. Now, the degree of worsening and how severe curves become, that tends to be unpredictable, and it tends to happen in some critical stages in life, mostly during adolescent stage, and also it can happen in late stage life, like over 60 plus years of age. It could be some significant progression or rapid or faster progression, I like to say. Now, the question I ask is that does scoliosis always cause pain? If everybody has, if you have scoliosis, you're gonna have pain, and pain is gonna be the reason why you've actually diagnosed scoliosis. The, unfortunately, that's not true. The scoliosis is considered to be a very complex condition, and the reason why it's so complex is because it's highly variable in nature. There's a lot of things associated with scoliosis, and there's a lot of things associated with the development of scoliosis. And not only does scoliosis wide rangely in its severity, it also wide rangely in the types of, uh, of scoliosis and it affects every age group out there from infantile to juvenile to adolescent to adult to later stage life or late late stage adult life and the patient age typically has the largest role in determining whether a scoliosis is going to be painful or not not necessarily the severity it's more has to do with how old the person is when they have or when they're when actually the scoliosis is diagnosed or actually how they are with the scoliosis progressing children are often found to be diagnosed with scoliosis but they are not found to have pain as a result of scoliosis. And this is because the condition hasn't become compressive. Compression of the vertebra onto nerves, muscles, and tissues is typically what consults, where it results in pain. This normally happens in the adult phase after skeletal maturity is reached and the patient is no longer growing. During the growth phase, the constant growth and lengthening of the body and the spine, it counteracts this compressive nature. Even though that in this growth phase, we do see curves progress, but they're progressing because of elongation. They're not progressing because of compression. And as a result of this, they're no, they tend not to have any kind of pain or symptoms as a result of the scoliosis, no matter how severe this curve becomes. And this is unfortunate because if small curves actually cause some pain, people may actually treat them sooner and get them checked out sooner. But because they are asymptomatic, they normally don't feel any kind of discomfort while they're progressing and they're growing during this adolescent stage, a lot of patients can will not get diagnosed until their curve is severe and it's very visual posturally. That is the number one thing that brings on a diagnosis in an adolescent stage. Unfortunately, in the adult stage, when, this, when the curve's compressed, it can now start leading to back pain, leg pain, radicular pain, all these types of pains that we could be associated with scoliosis, but this is common in the adult fa uh, phase. How bad can this pain become if you start experiencing pain? Well, unfortunately, scoliosis induces a lot of uneven forces into the body. And for adults, the back pain can range from being very mild and very intermittent and it can be kind of comes and goes and kind of gets better with uh, with rest. And this tends to be in that middle age or that young adult age from like 20 to 40 years of age. As the curve progresses in the adult stage and becomes more chronic and so it becomes more compressive, it can unfortunately lead to more chronic and debilitating pain, uh, pain. And this tends to happen as patients get older and where the curve is located. Now the curve location, the most common curve type to cause pain will be a lumbar curve. And it tends to be affecting on the left side of the body, having a left lumbar curve, causing problems into the left left leg and left hip. And the only this angle of severity as it progresses in the adult stage is when it starts to hurt. So what I'm trying to say is that you can have a relatively severe curve as a child, feel nothing, 
right? No pain. That curve um, progresses very, very slowly in the adult stage, and it starts, starts picking up speed, and now it starts compressing. That same curve that didn't hurt in as, as an adolescent will now start causing pain in the adult stage. In addition, there is something called ATR, or angle of trunk rotation. As rotation increases as the curve gets bigger, it tends to be more associated with pain in the adult form. So as we see more postural deformity, more compression in the adult form, we tend to see more associated pain, that this progression in the adult stage is what leads to pain. Now, nerve compression can occur because the body's putting pressure down onto these nerves that exit the spine. And once you compress these nerves, the pain can cause, uh, can be radiating down into legs or arms, causes ridiculous type of pain. So the, the, these types of symptoms is unfortunately not uncommon when patients with scoliosis progress in the adult stage. This nerve pain going into the extremities can also lead to tingling, numbness, electric shock-like sensations, and it can lead to lots, a whole variety of different types of symptoms resulting from the spine and the scoliosis. Now, a lot of times, patients with scoliosis can complain of muscle soreness, muscle pain, muscle fatigue. And in fact, the most likely types of symptoms tend to be like this. They tend to feel okay when they wake up in the morning. And as they go throughout their day, because of compression, the body fatigues and compresses, and they feel worse going to bed. And then as they rest and sleep, they wake up the next day feeling a little bit better. As the pain gets worse and more severe, they start working in the morning feeling stiff, and then they take a little while to loosen up, and then they restart that cycle again. So it increases as they compress themselves throughout the day. Now, children, adolescents, sometimes can feel muscle pain as well, but normally their muscle pain is a result of just the curve progressing, leading to asymmetry into the muscle tissues, which actually helps support the spine. And as these curves actually progress in the adolescent stage, the muscles are trying to support this asymmetrical curve, and some muscles are working stronger, and some curves are working less because of this asymmetrical tone, and this can lead to some muscle stiffness. But it's normally not significant in the adolescent stage. As when it becomes more significant in the adult stage, is that these curves have been there so long that the muscles start becoming very imbalanced, and it can lead to strain, it can lead to sore muscles, it can lead to unbalanced muscles. And what happens is muscles on the one side become overused, and the muscles on the other side become underused, and this muscle imbalance leads to an issue. Now understand, the muscle imbalance is not what's causing the scoliosis in the majority of cases. It is reacting to the scoliosis. So normally just doing muscle work or muscle things to make, try to, try to make your muscles stronger normally doesn't produce the results that we want in scoliosis patients because it's a result of the curve, not a cause of. Now there are some cases of neuromuscular scoliosis that could be the muscle imbalance, could be the reason why they're developing scoliosis, but that's a, a, a very small minority of scoliosis cases, five to 7% are diagnosed with the neuromuscular condition. So the vast majority of idiopathic cases, the, cur the muscles are reacting reacting to the curve, not the other way around. Now, the best treatment option for patients that are experiencing either scoliosis pain, scoliosis stiffness, muscle imbalance as a result of scoliosis, um, nerve pain, radiating pain as a result of scoliosis, is to actually treat the scoliosis itself because all of these are symptoms of the curve and normally the curve progressing in the adult stage. So the best way to deal with these issues is to actually reduce the curve itself. By reducing the curve, you reduce the effects that's having on the body, and therefore the body can start recovering and healing and start feeling better as a result of the, the curve reduction. Unfortunately, the majority of time, the way symptoms are treated in a scoliosis patient is they're treated the symptom and they're not treating the curve. They're treating the muscle imbalance, they're treating the nerve pain, they're treating the symptoms of the curve. And what this means it normally means that the curve is unfortunately could still be worsening. And if the curve is still worsening while their symptoms are being managed, let's say with either medications or, or injections or those kinds of things that they normally use to help treat pain, these unnatural sideways, sideways curvatures get worse. And as they get worse, whatever they're doing tends to have a lesser effect. And as they get, as they reevaluate these curves, they're seeing that the curves have now progressed. And then normally the, the treatments become more invasive. So as curves become bigger, normally treatments become more invasive until they end up with the 
end result being that they start considering spinal fusion and spinal surgery. When we work on a curve reduction through very specific types of care, using specific chiropractic care, using adjustments to help move the spine cl closer back to normal, using physical therapy and rehabilitation to help rebalance the muscles and tissues, using traction devices to help push the spine back into a straighter alignment, while getting the curve reduction to occur, the body can start to heal and repair itself. And these symptoms that the patient is feeling as a result of the scoliosis improve because we're correcting the cause, not just trying to treat the symptom. And this, this is really important when it comes to managing scoliosis, because one thing we don't want to deal with is just managing the pain, but the curve is worsening. You're basically kind of kicking the can down the road for a more severe issue later on, which normally going to mean more severe or more uh, more severe types of treatments. And gonna, the treatments are typically going to be more invasive to your body. So Dealing with the curve while it's smaller will always produce a better result. And when we get curve reduction to occur and we can hold the curve reduction, now we start influencing progression because in the adult form, the number one factor in progression is the size of curve. So everything being equal, a 50 degree curve will progress faster than a 40, a 40 faster than a 30. So as your curve progresses, it starts progressing faster, causing more and more and more problems and more and more symptoms. Where with our type of approach, where we're trying to reduce the curve and trying to deal with this curve at the, at the actual size, and then we're doing treatment and therapies to try to manage the curve and strengthen the curve around this new reduction, we're impacting how fast the curve is progressing because we're actually making it smaller. So very often, symptoms tend to be what's addressed with scoliosis patients, with solely with medications or injections, and they don't really address the underlying cause, which is the curve itself, and they lead to very short-term results. The way to achieve long-term results with scoliosis pain or malfunction is to actually reduce the curve, and this is what we do here at Scoliosis Reduction Center. We wanna be proactive to try to reduce the curve before it gets more severe, and therefore we can have a greater structural response to the scoliosis and a greater long-term response for the patient's symptoms that they're experiencing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.